It's hard to be heard in today's world, yet it's not impossible. It just requires a bit more thought and creative effort than usual. And in some ways, that fits what the 18th century clergyman John Wesley came to see. All his life, he never curbed his enthusiasm for the gospel. But he did modify many of his original opinions. His best sermons are masterclasses, two stand out for being heard in any era. One he called the more excellent way and the other was Catholic spirit. The gist of the message in each comes down to this. Our interpretations of subject matter, like the Bible, are always open. Our interpretations are in fact our opinions. These may be well formed, partly formed or uninformed. The more excellent way and Catholic spirit suggest our Christian faith enlarges the more we inform our opinions. So let's apply that to today's church. A former principal of Trinity Theological College, Reverend Dr. John Salmon, once wrote an interesting and very much informed article on how we play with language. He used the philosopher Ludwig Wittgenstein as a starting point. He suggested if we thought of God as G-O-D and run as R-U-N and put them together, we ended up with ground. Paul Tillich famously suggested that the idea of God in the 20th century was to think of what was the ground of our being. God was the ground of all being, including our being. Now John Salmon, in my opinion, rather adroitly made the ground of being God's run. That's very much in the spirit of Wittgenstein and also Catholic spirit. John Wesley may not have been amused by the language game afoot, but he would certainly have understood its importance and implications. And he made it part and parcel of the more excellent way. Why is that? Because all his life Wesley lived at the intersection of faith and life, theology and philosophy. In a famous letter, he takes one of his spiritual mentors, William Law, to task. Wesley gently admonishes Law for weaving faith and philosophy too much together. In earlier times, Law had taken Wesley to task for precisely the same, straying too much into the territory of philosophy at the expense of practical faith. So each was a little guilty of the same failing, but of course it wasn't really a failing. It was the inevitable consequence of living out of the ground, the God-run of Catholic spirit. The inescapable fact is that Christian faith has to explain itself with the insights of practical theology and philosophy. The subject of Christianity is life, all its heartbreaks, tragedies, triumphs and successes. It's our explanation of what we are, who we are, and how we are in the context of life. As Dr. Salmon rightly said, it's the God run of our being. I think that truth is cogent, expressed for the mood of our era, and allows for much experiment in the Wesleyan sense. It will, be it will continue to be heard in today and tomorrow's world by those with ears to listen. Dr. Salmon came from an academic background of philosophy of education. He was steeped in it. It was much needed in the connectional life of New Zealand Methodism. By bringing philosophy into critical interaction with faith today, he set an agenda item that will prove vital for the future well-being of the church. Let's have more language gaming in church. Who knows what creative insights and possibilities it could bring. Game on. See you next week as we explore more at the intersection of faith and philosophy. And thanks for watching.